If I had to choose one solo to really highlight John Mayer's incredible tone, one example that really just gives you an idea of what his quintessential sound is, there's been one example that's come to mind at least whenever I think of the subject for a while now, but I honestly haven't really figured out a way to showcase it on the channel and I just figured, you know what, why not do one video just dedicated to this one solo and the insane tone that John was getting during it. So in August of 2013, John performed a cover of Can't Find My Way Home by Blind Faith. And there's a good chance you've probably seen this performance because the tone in it is just mind blowing. The first time I heard it, I was absolutely floored and I continuously go back to watching this solo performance because it's just absolutely ridiculous. So what we're gonna do today in this video is we're gonna listen to the solo together and then I'm gonna go over all of the gear and we're gonna discuss it afterwards. So let's play the solo first for you guys. You're gonna be blown away if you haven't heard this before. If you have never heard that performance before and this was your very first time hearing it in this video, let me know in the comments down below and let me know your thoughts on it because at least me personally when I first heard it I was just blown away. And as much as I love The Silver Skies and as much as I love John Mayer's modern tone, there is just something incredibly special about the Born and Raised and Paradise Valley era's sound, especially when John has a Fender Stratocaster in his hand like the black one or the 64 Strat. There is just something special about it that makes me miss those guitars from time to time. And whenever I listen to this clip, there's definitely one example of me missing hearing the black one live. Even just making this video today makes me miss the black one. Seeing it in a performance like this, going back to this era, which for a lot of us fans of Mayer's work, it's just, it's just so special again. And I, I, this just makes me miss the black one. And we can only hope that we get to see this guitar performed again live and even like the 64 Strat, hopefully one day John brings these guitars back out because they just sound absolutely phenomenal and they all have their own unique characteristics.
All right, so let's discuss the pedals that we would have heard during this incredible performance. Now, the wah pedal that we heard halfway through the solo was the RMC8 Equalizer wah pedal. This is the main wah pedal that John used during both the Battle Studies era and the Born and Raised Paradise Valley tours as well. The prices of these wah pedals have just kind of gone astronomical on reverb. It's insane what people are asking for these wah pedals now. Um, I've always wanted to try one out. I have an older RMC wah pedal myself, but the RMC8 is just really cool with that equalizer on the front of it. I really wanna try one of those out if I ever do find one for what is actually you know a reasonable price for <laughs> what it is, but they are definitely hard to find. But if you're looking for a great modern example, even something like the exotic XW1 wah pedal sounds fantastic and obviously we'll get that kind of sound with its tweakability. When it comes to drive pedals, however, this is where things get a little bit trickier in trying to pinpoint exactly what John was using. Now, in this era, we know that he added the Klon Centaur to his pedal board as his light overdrive pedal full time, and he actually stopped using the Mark I Marshall Blues Breaker. Back during the Battle Studies era, the previous era to this one, he was experimenting with the Klon Centaur and the Mark I Blues Breaker at the same time. So we know the Klon Centaur would have been used in part of the gain stacking process. However, when it comes to the Tube Screamer option, it's not as straightforward as it just saying, it's of course the TS-10. During this era, and especially kind of earlier on in the tour, as far as I can tell, based on the images you guys are gonna see, John was actually experimenting between the Ibanez TS-10 and the Ibanez TS-808, which is what he used during the trio and earlier continuum eras. It's just really cool seeing John possibly considering going back to using the TS-808 during this era, because I think a lot of people just assume once the TS-10 was added to his pedal board, that's the Tube Screamer pedal that he stuck with till present day now, but in reality, the TS-808 almost made its way back into the mix a bit full time. So again, here for this performance, I do believe it was the TS-808. We have a shot of his pedal board in kind of mid, late July, showing the TS-808 on the board. And then actually less than a week later, John performed on Letterman, and that pedal board also featured the TS-808. So I'm pretty confident in saying that what we heard in this solo was the TS-808 stacked with the Klon Centaur and possibly a Keeley Katana as well. When it comes to the amplifiers, the amp selection for this era was just absolutely brilliant. It was two John Mayer Two Rock Signatures and Dumble Steel String Singer 002. Now, in terms of the Two Rocks and the Dumble, this is kind of one of the eras where John was slightly doing a wet, dry, wet thing, and he was using two Bricassi M7 reverbs in each of the loops of the Two Rock John Mayer Signatures for some additional reverb, and then the Dumble Steel String Singer was the center dry amplifier. It is a bit of a common misconception that John does always use a wet, dry, wet thing. It definitely wasn't always the case. This is really the one time with these Bricasti units that John was really doing more of a wet, dry, wet system, but it was just reverb. All the delays and everything else ran straight into all three amplifiers together. Just the reverbs in these Bricasti units were doing a wet, dry, wet sort of thing. When it comes to the speaker cabinets, each amplifier was sat on a pair of Alessandro 212 cabinets, but the speakers in each cabinet were actually different. So in order to go and figure out what speakers were actually mic'd up for this performance, I had to go back and watch different footage from the same night in order to figure this out. So for the Dumbo, the one that actually had the Alessandro badge on it is what was mic'd up for this performance, and that's the one that had Alessandro Neos in it. And for the two Rock John Mayer signature amplifiers, the speakers in each cabinets were actually the same. So the unmarked cabinets for the John Mayer signature two Rocks were Celestian G1265s, and those were what were mic'd up rather than the Celestian Sentries in the ones that had the J on them for the two Rock John Mayer signatures. So that's the speaker combination we were hearing in this performance. I think as a whole, the Born and Raised in Paradise Valley era is truly special when it comes to John's tone. It's just so brilliant sounding. And I mean, John's never had bad tone, let's be honest. The Sawbrock era was great. The 2019 World Tour was great. Okay, the Search for Everything World Tour wasn't my favorite sounding, I'll be honest. But overall, they've all been fantastic sounding. And even that era still sounded good. And, but just this one was just truly special to me at least. So let me know in the comments down below, especially if this is your first time ever hearing this performance in this video. Let me know your thoughts on it and if it isn't, let me know if you agree with me that the tone out of this Can't Find My Way Home Blind Faith cover performance is just, if it's as brilliant as I'm making it out to be, at least as I think it is, let me know if you agree with me. And as always, you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. It just greatly helps the channel and the video grow and helps 
all the work I'm putting into the channel, it just, you know, it helps me out. So if you appreciate the videos and like the videos, a thumbs up engaging with the video always goes a long way. Same with your comments as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you enjoyed today's video, these are what all my videos are like. So please subscribe to the channel. And again, that just helps let me know as well. I'm doing a great job with these videos. So until the next time, you guys, thank you so very much for watching. Take care and we'll see you soon. Anyway, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you like what you see.